And it's time now for Sunday House Call. I'm Eric Shaw. And I'm Laura Engel. Welcome to all of you. Joining us right now is Dr. David Samadhi, Chairman and Professor of Urology at Lenox Hill Hospital and Chief of Robotic Surgery. And as always, Dr. Mark Siegel, Professor of Medicine at NYU's Langone Medical Center, is also the author of The Inner Pulse, Unlocking the Secret Code of Sickness and Health. Doctors, good to see you. Great to see you. Good Welcome. to see you again. Absolutely. We start with uh, bacon and booze. You want, you want to stay away from this. There's a new study from the American Institute for Cancer Research that looks at the causes of stomach cancer. And they found out there were three new and somewhat surprising links. Alcohol, processed meat, and obesity. So, Dr. Samadhi, how do we reduce our chances of getting stomach cancer? Well, these three factors are a huge news uh, that was published this week. In the past, we knew that absolutely smoking and also bacteria such as H. pylori, you've heard of this, and also real barbecue food can lead to either colon cancer or stomach cancer. Based on this particular study, they looked at about 89 studies over millions, 17 million population. They found out that actually alcohol can increase the risk of stomach cancer. If you drink more than three alcohol a day, you should be really be concerned about this. 1.8 ounce of processed meat, almost one hot dog a day, can increase the risk of stomach cancer by 18 percent. And obesity, which is a big nightmare, a third of the country is suffering from obesity, is not only like a big factor for endometrial, breast, and colon cancer, but now stomach cancer. So what do you have to do? Mark, this is unbelievable. Let me just say, I mean, let me just first stop. Why alcohol? How much? And why processed meats? And is it all processed meats, too? I'm wondering, you know, the turkey bacon, mm -hmm. is that okay, or is it everything? It's all processed meats. It has to do with something, a chemical called nitrites or nitrates that are in hot dogs, that are in turkey bacon or in bacon. And these things convert to something into your stomach that irritate your stomach lining. The whole issue is, is your stomach lining irritated? David talked about Heliobacter pylori, which is a bacteria that irritates and inflames your stomach lining. Alcohol does that. That's why it's implicated. This study looked at 77,000 cases of stomach cancer, American Institute of Cancer Research. This is huge. This is huge information, but it goes back to practicality. When you smoke, it irritates your stomach lining. All of these things cause this to happen. And the biggest problem I have, Eric, is how do I know about it? Men over the age of 50, women too, but especially men over the age of 50, I start to look at differently because that's when it all occurs. But you know what the biggest problem is? By the time I can diagnose stomach cancer, 75% of the time it's too late to do anything they because they're bloated vague. or they're nauseous or vague they symptoms. lose weight. We don't know. It's not specific to anything. David, what are the symptoms? Now, how do you know if you have stomach cancer? Well, the cancer? symptoms are very vague because, you know, in the stomach there's plenty of space as opposed to colon mm -hmm. where if you have a little narrowing, they would see some blood, they would yeah. see a narrow stool but in stomach, by the time you get to it, it may be too late. So if you see any blood, if you see nausea, vomiting, if for some reason you're losing a lot of weight without trying, that's when you should see the, uh, the doctor. They will do that endoscopy. The survival at five years, if you catch it early, is about 90%. Wow. If it's already late, then it becomes 10% and it's a deadly one. You need to add fruits and vegetables and fiber. That's how you fight the inflammation. We've talked about, for example, adding garlic to your food, mm -hmm. ginger, uh, all of these uh, are, are ways to reduce the inflammation and, and basically reducing the rate of yeah, it, stomach and lose weight. Exercise oh, yeah. is a big part of this as well. And Dr. Siegel, you know, in addition to those fruits and vegetables that we heard about and, and beans as well, and a lot of people watching might say, well, but can I still have my red wine? I'm, I guess I'm going back to the turkey bacon. Like, is it still okay to have a BLT? Is it still okay to have a glass of wine? Is it still okay to have what kind of alcohol? You know, Laura, I think it's a matter of degree because every, all, everything we're talking about today is related. Think about it. When we talk about obesity, what do you think obese people eat? They're not eating avocados. They're not eating salads. They're not eating fruit and vegetables. So yeah, you can have turkey bacon every few days once in a while. Sure, you can have a, a glass of red wine. There's nothing that shows that a, one glass of red wine with dinner is going to cause this. We're saying greater than three drinks a day, David was saying. Right. You know, but, but overall, alcohol is irritating your stomach. If this is a lifestyle issue. Get up and exercise, lose that weight, and eat more fruit and vegetables, and you're going to have a m markedly decreased risk. One other thing is family history. Mm -hmm. I look for this in people who have it in their families. If you've got a father or mother that, had, God forbid, had stomach cancer, I'm going to be screening you. Over the age of 50, I may send you for an endoscopy just to rule this out. If you're saying I have heartburn, if I, I mean, Doc, I've had it for years. Yeah, but over the age of 50, I start Don't to look at it. Don't forget, stop smoking. Smoking Absolutely. is also a big part of this, and you want to make sure that whenever you 
can, right. besides losing weight and exercise, stop smoking. And going back to what you were saying, moderation is the key. Right. And what I'm hearing so, from both of you is listen to your body. If you feel like something is wrong, call the doctor mm -hmm. because time and time again we hear it. these terrible stories of people who don't pick up the phone and make the appointment when they feel something's a little bit off. So thank you very much for that.